Now, the problem with people today is that how you build up a ministry is using gimmicks. I don't believe in doing that where you have to build up a whole thing on gimmicks. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5. So then they'll give like these IFB churches, these fundamental Baptist churches, the reason why they grow so big is because they give out these uh, fellowship meetings and Walmart gift cards and then, you know, free win a free flat screen TV if you bring 10 more people to church. Uh, Ray Comfort, you know, how he gets the people to listen to his street preaching is that he'll give out free money and stuff like that. And then, you know, people on the internet, they'll just post all this kind of stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Some people will be just dumb enough to tase themselves at the border so that their ministry can be popular, saying sodomite should be killed so that all the news can publicize them so they can build up a ministry. You know, I don't believe in doing that. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5. That's fleshy. You're building a ministry on the works of the flesh, and God will never bless and honor that. There are some street preaching jerks that use shocking tactics where you're a whore, you're a whore to every girl that doesn't dress properly. And they think that by doing that, then that's how they get a crowd, which is true. You get a large crowd and they listen to you. But, you know, look at 1 Corinthians 2, 5. That your faith should not stand in the what? Wisdom of men, but in what? The power of God. If you build up your faith, your life, especially your ministry, on the wisdom of men and not on the power of God, then God will never bless and honor that. I don't believe in that. That's why these IFB churches, they lack the power of God, you might say. But they got a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people who are carnal and will complain about the color of the donut and the color of the cushion they're sitting on. And if they don't keep providing them that, then they won't come back to the church. See, that's how you build up your ministry. I don't believe in that. But here's another thing. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Does that mean that we are supposed to ignore the things of the world that God has given to us? Absolutely not. And that's where uh, another extreme, which I'm going to cover more actually. So here's the problem with a lot of Bible-believing Christians and then internet Christians and all these kind of people. This is their problem. Their problem is, is that the reason why they can't build up a ministry and you, you people, when you try to witness to lost souls, etc., you can't get any fruit whatsoever, is because you're not using the opportunities of this world to build up what God has blessed you with. Now, you might say, I thought that you were condemning it earlier. Yeah, we condemn it earlier, but this is the balance. Look at 1 Corinthians 7, verse 31. Chapter 7, verse 31. And they that use this world, see that? We use the world as not what? Abusing it. So the key is this. When you abuse this, see? That's the point. Abusing the things of the world. But is there something wrong with using the things of the world? Absolutely not. So we're not going to abuse the internet, but we're de you don't think I'm not going to use the internet? Of course I'm going to use the internet, see? So uh, we're not going to abuse a church building, but does that mean I'm not going to use a church building? Are you kidding me? I'm going to use a church building. So the thing is this, is that as not abusing it, the key is this, if your faith, see that's the point, who's the faith upon? The faith in 1 Corinthians 2.5, uh, I'll just write it right here. The faith is not in the wisdom of men, but on the power of who? God. So here's the thing. Who does your faith rely on? God? Yes. And isn't God the one who provided you the things of the world? Look at 1 Corinthians 3. See that? Look at 1 Corinthians 3. That's the key, see? That's the key. Look at 1 Corinthians 3. Look, if you're not going to take advantage of the things of the world, don't say, oh, I, we're, we're in an apostate day and age. No one's listening to me. My subscribers in the internet are so small. Oh, no one comes to my church. We should have a house church. And you know what? Uh, nobody, no pastor is right. Everybody's wrong except me. And you, you know, you, you come up with that kind of a problem. See, you come up with that kind of a problem because you refuse to use the things of this world that God has given to you to glorify him. 
Oh, God, don't. Yeah, he did. Look at this verse. Look at verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men for what? All things are yours. Look at this. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the what? World or what? Life or what? Death or what? Things present. What you have right now. Or things what? To come. All are what? Yours. God has given it to you. Now, what are you going to do about it? So, you know what? If God has given you, especially in, a, look, if you live in America, you got so many opportunities, okay? And if, you didn't, if you're not going to use those opportunities, all right, don't blame God and don't whine and don't blame all the people for being apostate. You got no one to blame but yourself. God has given you the things of the world. So here's the thing is that why am I going to use the internet? Why am I going to use the things of the world, etc.? You know why I'm going to use that? Why am I going to use my degree? See, why am I going to use those things? So because God has given me those things and I'm not going to waste what God has given to me. See that? But does my faith rely on those things? No, my faith relies on God who gave me those things. See, you know why? Because the Lord gives and the Lord what? takes away see that so look the lord can take away my degree the lord can well i don't think that's possible but the lord lord can, oh, let's just the lord can take away our church building the lord can take away uh, our internet the lord can take away all those things will i panic and fear no because my faith relies on god Amen. who gave me those things and takes it away because remember first corinthians seven thirty one, the fashion of the world what passeth away See that? If you, so that's why I disagree with IFB churches. I disagree with those street preachers who use gimmicks or shock tactics because they know that, and I also condemn, listen to me, I also condemn pastors out there who, who could not build a ministry at all until they had the internet. I condemn all those people. Why? Because they know without those things, they have no ministry. They're going to have nobody listen to them. But guess what? We did fine as a church even without the internet. Didn't you know that? We did fine without the gimmicks. I mean, we were, we were rotting in a classroom too, okay? So we don't have a nice church building either. And then during those times, did we have fruit? Yes, we had fruits. We've seen, we've seen a lot of fruit despite of that. So, you know, and then the Lord, he just gave us this internet. So I just took advantage of it. That's it. And guess what? For years, we weren't big at all until the Lord just finally let us in. See? So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the last verses. Let's also go to... So we don't have much time, so we're going to look at these uh, pretty briefly. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. So I'm going to write all these verses right now. 1 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians 12, and Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. So here's the thing is that I agree. Uh, I think it was a clever idea on what Ray Comfort did to use these things to have people pay attention. But the thing is this also is that it becomes to a point where you rely on that for people to hear the gospel. And you know that if you don't have that, no one will listen to you. Because as soon as he gives out all the money and he starts proclaiming the gospel, you know what people start doing? They all of a sudden start leaving after that, see? So the thing is this, is that you got to use these things where it's not relying on them. It's not relying on them. As long as you're relying on God to use them. Because let me say this too, okay? Yeah, it may have been clever ideas on what I did uh, with certain videos on what I taught and the titles. But guess what? It didn't work all the time. Because whenever I posted another video with a similar idea and title, guess what? The views were very small. It didn't work. So the Lord did that to teach me that, hey, what are you relying on? Are you relying on how the wisdom of men to build, to have a lot of people watch the online thing? Or are you relying on me to do it? So I relied on him. When I relied on him, he gave me the ideas to use. And as long as I used it faithfully, then the Lord will see fit on which one he'll bring in all the fruit. Oh, you know, clickbait title, right? Oh, you know, the stuff that you're teaching. Why are you teaching that kind of stuff about end times, etc.? Well, the thing is this. Click bait, yeah, but Jesus Christ said that I'm supposed to be a fisher of men. So, yeah, I will use bait to draw them in. Amen. That's 
All I'm doing is taking advantage of what God has given to me. Yeah, end times, but guess what? For four years, I never taught on end times at all. I did basic doctrines with what I'm doing with some of you right now. I did two years, two years, three years straight, just basic doctrines. You know how much I wanted to teach on the deep stuff? But you know what? The reason why is because I know you have to lay milk first before you give the meat. And, it wasn't, and then you know what? Uh, after I gave the meat, by the way, isn't it that Bible anyway? Yeah. I'm going to use anything in the Bible. Amen. All right? So I'm just, that's all I'm using too. And you know what? God saw fit to bless it after that. See that? You just don't take advantage of those things. And maybe some of you just get jealous and then you just accuse what Bible-believing ministries are doing, how they're building up things. That's your problem. Look at 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. Well, why do you have to do all these things? Because Paul said to do it. He said you should do it so that people can get saved, so that people can get converted. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Look at verse 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. That's your problem. You're too prideful. I think it's more of selfishness rather than submission. If you learn to think about what people think, see, and what to say and how to do things that can meet certain people, you would probably build a bigger ministry and build up more fruits after that, don't you think? But no, you're too pharisaical and you're too spiritual. So you think they all have to come up to your level. Guess what? Those fleshy apostate people will never go up to your level. So let's look at, so you have to be servant to all, right? That's why verse 20, and unto the Jews I became as a what? Jew. Wasn't Paul condemning about circumcision and all that? Yeah. But you know what? To reach the other Jews, he decided to follow along with that. That I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, the Gentiles. As without law. That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak. That I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that by all means save some. Thank God for the souls that got saved in street preaching and visitation. That's why I teach you guys how to do soul winning, right? On what kind of wisdom, how to catch these people. But some of these arrogant Bible believers, they're like, I mean, I had one who would not submit to my instructions. That's why there were these people who could not get these souls saved. And they get discouraged. Well, why isn't anybody listening to me? But then the people who followed these instructions on soul winning, they were like saying, oh, yeah, I led this many souls to salvation, etc. See, it's because you refuse to think what other people are thinking to their level. Not only that, the Internet, too. Why do we get so many people converting to King James Bible and dispensationalism? And you guys whine that you don't get it. You know why? I'm thinking what people are thinking. That's why. How to reach them. And this I do for what? The gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Look, it's all a matter of getting them saved. It's all a matter that they know Bible-believing truth so that they can get rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. I could care less what I have to do to get them to do that. As long as what? As long as my faith is in God who provides the things of the world, not my faith is relying on the world. Now these other verses, which we won't turn to for time's sake, but we saw 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we saw verses 19 through 23, 19 through 23. If you want to turn to these verses, that's fine, but I'm just going to quote them briefly. So Matthew chapter 10 and verse uh, 16 and 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and coincidentally verse 16. You know what the Bible says? So we, what? We compromise as much as we can. That way we can meet other people. 2 Corinthians 12, 16, you know how Paul caught these carnal, these Corinthians were carnal people. You know how Paul caught them and was able to build a church? Caught them with guile. He was crafty. Oh, I don't believe in that. That's sneaky. Well, Paul was a sneaky guy. No wonder he had more churches than you did. He had numerous churches. See that? Use craftiness, guile, to catch the person and you know what? That's what we did with uh, our soul winning. That's what I did with the internet, with the titles. What? Just guile, see? Craftiness. I caught, now some of you, I caught you. Hook, line, and sinker. Amen. Amen. And aren't you glad? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord after that. Matthew 10, verse 16. You got to realize this. You know what kind of a world we live in? We live in a world of wolves. 
Because Jesus said, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, Jesus warned them this. Look, you're not going to survive in a world of wolves by being gung-ho, all of zeal, without using any wisdom whatsoever. And using this attitude, this narrow-minded attitude, oh, it's Bible and the Lord told me this, I don't care. You're not going to survive with wolves. They're going to tear you apart. Jesus says when he sends you in the midst of wolves, be wise as serpents. You notice how the serpent was more subtle than any creature at Genesis 3, right? Lord wants you to be like that, craftier than the devil. But he also wants you to do what? Wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Innocent. Look, I'm just an innocent guy you're watching online. You wouldn't arrest me, right? Look, I'm a nice guy. We're not Mormons and Jehovah Witness. I just want to ask you a simple question. I caught you! Now you got saved. See that? So that's what you got to do. What you got to do is that you got to use that, and that's how you can build up fruit for the Lord. Why? To get them saved. To get them to become Bible believers. You guys can accuse me whatever you want, all right? Me, I'm happy with my fruits, and I know you're not. That's why all you can do is just get jealous and accuse us.